Yo, what's up, my beautiful people? I want to thank you guys for tuning in to another one of Hustle Queen Lee's unbiased sister reviews where anybody can get it. And we are reviewing, discussing, talking about, really digging deep. And I know a lot of us are pissed off. At, well, at least I was. So here it is, sisters. Season 2 finale, episode 22, entitled In the Shadows. Now I'm not even going to hold y'all. I'm really not. This was one of... In my personal opinion, this was one of the worst episodes of the series. Not the season, the entire series. And in all honesty, I was appalled by how poorly written this episode was. Now, I don't need nobody trying to tell me, well, if you don't like the show, you should shut up. <laughs> we all have an opinion about it. And it is what it is. And this is mine. I I, I felt very disappointed. It was very lackluster. It almost came off like a mid-season finale and not an actual season finale. And I'm thinking it, if Tyler went this way because the show is coming back June 9th, normally we don't get sisters until fall to like October time, but it's coming back in the summer. So I'm like, is that the reason why he went this route? But there were so many inconsistencies within this episode that some things just didn't make sense. And it, it really pissed me off because I felt like, what the hell is going on with everybody on the show? Like, everybody. So, y'all know how I do. If you like what you hear, make sure you like, share, and um, subscribe. I appreciate it a lot. I really do. And um, we're going to get into this thing. Now, the first episode, the first episode, the first um, scene, we pick back up where we left off. In the grocery store. And, you know, <sighs> The entire scene pissed me off <laughs> from from top to bottom. The entire scene, the entire scene pissed me off. And normally, when I watch the show, I watch it when it airs live, and then I immediately go and I watch um, the recording of it. And normally, when I watch it the first time, I watch it from the audience and the fans' perspective. And then the second time I watch it, I try to watch it from the characters' perspective. So. When I think about, now, don't get me wrong, I don't think anybody should have really been in their feelings, but people have a right to feel how they feel. Now, this think about the irony in this initially. Fatima being Andy's assistant, a new client of Karen's, Zach's new piece, and then for Karen to be Zach's ex. Now, I know for me, if I was Karen, I would be thinking, did this heifer know who I was? Because it was just so perfect I mean it was Tyler Perry's writing up and down that's his format and I'm just like I would be thinking that way from the character's perspective of course we know that Fatima doesn't know the connections but Karen doesn't know that and I gotta admit if it was me I would be like nah this whole knew the whole time that but you know she really did not and so if I was Karen <laughs> I would have been thinking about this heifer came in my shop told me everything this man did why her hair is, is jacked up because they, you know, had banged in the shower, not knowing this whole time she was talking about my ex. So I could understand that perspective. However, at the same time, Karen was was dealing with Aaron, and really she had no right to come at Fatima like that. When Fatima was like, when did this happen? And she was like, none of your business o'clock. I said, now, wait a minute, chick. Wait, 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 wait a minute now. You need to calm your little ass down because – Nobody knew about anything, and I didn't feel that Fatima was old, that type of energy. And then it, it took a minute for Karen to be like, you know, you didn't know, I don't, I didn't know. Like, basically, we don't have a beef with one another. And it was just very challenging because Fatima kept apologizing. And I'm like, what the hell is Fatima apologizing for? And then I really started thinking about the character of Fatima. So I'm like, does Fatima have friends because we have not seen Fatima with friends. I can tell that Fatima truly respects Andy. Why? I don't know, but she really does. And also she loves being around the group because she mentioned that, you know, I'm just starting a friendship with these ladies. And I can tell that meant a lot to her. But at the same time, I'm like, sis, you don't know, you don't owe anyone an apology, especially not Karen. They are exes. It was Zach and Karen who made the adult decision to have sex. You know what I'm saying? And so it, let, let's go to Zach for a moment. So I know a lot of people was like, you know, Zach doesn't owe anyone an explanation. And I agree with that to a certain extent. But when you are about your business, why did Zach come off looking guilty? 
So if you just out here doing your thing, you're not committed to anybody. There should be no reason for guilt. There should be no reason for you to act like you got caught because that's what he acted like. He acted like a man who got caught in a situation when actuality you weren't caught, dude, because you're not with Karen and you're not in an, in an exclusive committed relationship with Fatima. So why did Zach act like that? Just that immaturity alone, him walking away, coming back, walking away. You just banged Karen in, in the office, could barely look at her in her face because you know you was wrong. You knew you was wrong, but this was the prime example of what happens when we do not lay out in detail or we're not intentional about talking to each other about where we stand in our relationship, especially Zach and Fatima. There was just nothing concrete about, you know what I'm saying, what they were doing. Now, Danny... Y'all already know, for y'all who've been listening for a while, y'all know I have a love-hate relationship with Danny. Danny got on my nerves this whole episode. (laughs) Like, Danny, Danny pissed me off. Now, I do understand a lot of people love Danny because, you know, she keeps it real. She tells it like it is. And I am not denying that. I I truly believe that 90% of the time, Danny is accurate in assessing the situations with her friends. The issue I have with Danny is how she chooses to deliver her truth. When you're dealing with someone's emotions and feelings like that, when you're talking about how you care about a person and then adding sex in that, it's a way that you should talk to people. First of all, it's only your second time seeing Fatima. You told Fatima that Zach and Karen effed in her salon. It was just it was a little over the top for me because the thing that and then what got me also about um Danny, when she told that, no, look at this woman's face. You need to tell her the truth. I said, oh, heifer, shut the hell up. Because when Preston caught you in bed and and, and James came out your bathroom butt ball naked, were you trying to tell him the truth? I wait. No, she wasn't. So it just, I always have an issue with people who speak things and they don't live by it themselves. Uh, Derrick Jackson. But that's a whole nother video. And we ain't going to get into that because that is not what this video is about. So that whole scene was just very interesting. Even going back to Fatima apologizing to Andy, she didn't have to do that, but I understood why she did it. Cause this is my boss. This is her best friend. I don't want there to be an issue or for it to be perceived. Like I did this on purpose. I will say that I do see but Fatima is a true ride or die. She's loyal. I believe Fatima is loyal to a fault. And I know that Fatima is not done with Zach. I can, I can clearly see that. She's not done with the brother, but we going to talk about all how he go from the car to Danny house. We <laughs> Jesus, that was part of the, in- one of the inconsistencies that, you know, that I was talking about. So we leave the grocery store. So we go, I'm going to be hopping around, I'm not going to be going in order. Um, so we get to the car scene and. Another, to me, another situation with Danny, you know, just speaking out of term. It's like, shut up. This is not the time for you to be telling Karen about how much Zach praised Fatima, what he told her. I guess for me, the thing that gets me about Danny, I don't believe that what she does to other people, she would want done to her. How she speaks on other people's situations publicly, I don't believe that she she would want those things done to her if the shoe was on the other foot. So that's like really my one of my biggest issues with um with Danny. Everybody wanted to be, you know, dropped off, taken home. Karen. Karen pissed me off this whole episode too. So Karen is sitting there, you know, sulking because Zach didn't tell Fatima her name. Now I say, I don't know about y'all, but I'm not tell I'm not talking about my ex to my man unless there's a unless a situation arises that we have to deal with. But other than that, what do I need to mention you for? And then she talked about, you know, all the history, all, all this, all that, all that time. And that you was the dumb one. You were the dumb one. I I didn't understand that, but it goes back to what I mentioned earlier about the way that Tyler has written these characters. Now I told y'all I was from the curse. I was going to say a word that you probably not going to hear anymore on this station, on this channel, but it just has to be said. I'm trying to understand how let's let's just be honest. When <laughs> when Karen and Zach were in that closet as Danny correctly identified, told him that's my office. No, boo, that's your damn closet. 
when Zach and Karen did what they did in there, there was nothing beautiful, sweet about that. It wasn't innocent. They fucked. Okay, I'm sorry. They fucked. That's it. All right, I said it twice. I said it once. I said it twice. It's over with. But I'm just like, that's what y'all did. Now, I do know when you have a sexual encounter that is good to you, it can make you start to think that maybe maybe we ended things too soon. Maybe we can make it work. But you're you're talking about giving a man another chance that you have not had a conversation with. And that happens a lot, too, in real life. You know, we'll have sex with, with someone, with an ex or something, and we think that sex is a healing mechanism to keep us together. It's not, it's not, an, it's not an uh, adhesive. It's just not. If something is broken, sex is not going to fix it. If there is an issue that's going on in your relationship, sex is not going to fix it. Now, sex may make you forget about it a little bit longer or not deal with it, but the situation and the issues are not going anywhere. Zach and Karen are extremely toxic. I, I, it's just, it's sickening how toxic these people are. And I'm just like, how you go from did what you experienced with Zach, it made you forget about everything that you and Aaron talked about. It made you forget that this man has feelings for you. It made like, I'm, I'm not understanding this. And it's just the way that it was written. Cause that, that it just don't make sense. It doesn't make logical sense, but I, have to go back. We're dealing with Tyler Perry. And all the time, Tyler and Logic, they just don't go together. They just, you will wreck your brain trying to understand what the hell Tyler Perry is trying to do with these people. So back in the car, everybody wanted to go to their respective places, you know, their respective homes. Danny, they dropped her off first. I'm not even going to get into all the semantics and everything they discussed because it just wasn't important. Um, So we go from the car scene. So I'm going to go to um, Preston. No, let me go back to the grocery store scene. Now, when Fatima was like, no, we need to discuss this because I'm not a woman who deal with bullshit, bullshit, gossip, or lies. Let's deal with this now. And Zach kept reiterating that he didn't want to deal with it there. Why would you, you know, try to start a friendship with them? Like, to me, Zach has disrespected these women over and over and over again. I really want to see at least one character on this damn show really put their foot down when it comes to Zach because they treat Zach like he's their, like he's a little brother who has all these sisters that can get away with whatever he wants to get away with. And it's tiresome and it's sickening. And we not had two full seasons, 47 episodes of this. And I'm like, can we, can we see a change? Can we really see something different from this character? Hell, all the characters. But right now we're specifically talking about Zach. It's like, can we see something different, please? Even going to the car scene with him and Fatima, like I said, I'm going to be hopping around, because that's how it is in my mind right now. The car scene with him and Fatima, that was a serious situation, and everything always turns into a joke. It always turns into comedic relief. Like, no, really, really deal with that. Yes, he acknowledged that, no, we are not dating. There is no commitment here. It's just not. And the fact that he said the only reason he would have told Fatima about what happened between him and Karen is if he would have known that they were going to run into each other. So basically if, if the grocery store scene never happened, Zach wasn't going to say anything, which brings me back to what I said about, you know, people believing that he didn't owe Fatima anything. And I said, that I agree with that up until a certain extent. Now, if you've been following my channel, I always talk about how I don't play with people's feelings. I am extremely honest when I'm dealing with men. Cause I just feel like that that's just me. And I understand that you can't, expect you from someone else but you can ask certain questions so for me the issue I had with that whole thing with Fatima Zach and Karen when it came to the sexual aspect I do believe that when you are having multiple partners it is your responsibility to let that person know like hey you're not the only one I am dealing with someone else but however we we always use a condom we, we just always use it. Now, I'm going to give y'all a personal story with me. So, <laughs> anyway, so, um, hey, I got stories for years. So, I was I was dealing with this guy. And, you know, everything was cool, whatever, whatever. And so, I asked him one night. I said, how many, how many girls you got on your roster? And so, he was like, what that mean? I said, you know what that mean. How many girls, how many women are you having sex with? And so he was like, did you really ask me that? I said, yeah, how many? And so he was like, nah, how many dudes you having sex with? I said, two. And he gave me this look like, 
what the hell? I said, you're not the only one. There's someone else. And I went into grave detail about what me and this someone else do. Now, my dynamic with that person is none of your business. But because I am having sex with you and someone else, you can make the decision whether or not you want to continue doing what we're doing or you ain't you ain't down with that. And so I feel like with Zach and Fatima, they haven't always used a condom. Zach, well, Fatima gave Zach head in the shower. So that's the quickest way to catch something because you literally put in this man genitals in your mouth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that that's the part that get me like, you know, I think it is important, not all the time, but I do think it is important to send a message of protecting yourself, especially you being in Atlanta, how the AIDS numbers there is just crazy. Like, even though she had the Magnum, you know, in her uh, little cart or whatever, but they have had unprotected sex. And then hours later, he went and had unprotected sex with Karen. So I'm just like, that's the part I feel that Zach should have been honest about when you having multiple partners. And I know that it wasn't his intent to have sex with Karen, but that's what happened. So all that, why didn't me fit to have, I didn't do it on purpose. What the fuck? What does that mean? Sex is done purposely unless you're raped. Unless you are sexually assaulted. It happened on purpose. Because there is a window for you to back away and be like, you know what? I can't do this. We can't go down this road any, mo- any longer. And neither he nor Karen took that moment in time to stop. They both wanted it and they both did it. So, no. So, Fatima was like, you know, you should have just told me. I would have been able to understand. You know, he was basically telling her, you know, he, she told him that, you know, I'm really feeling you. But you're still into her. And he was like, I'm not into her. I'm like, Zach, why you lying? That's the thing that get me about Zach. Like, we not, it ain't, it ain't no thing where I have to tell you everything. But now that we're having this discussion, tell the truth. You literally just told Karen how much you love her, all all this stuff. And then when this woman says you into her, you tell her that you're not. And I'm like, that's the part I have the problem with. So anyway, we get the, we get the car scene. Next thing we know, Zach. (laughs) <laughs> miraculously miraculously transported to Danny's house. So when Danny gets in her house, she, you know, she's trying to get it on with um Preston and we see Zach. She tells Zach he needs to get out of her house. Zach tells her with all the audacity that he's not going anywhere. What the hell you mean? You got 20, no one knows this, but you have $25,000 on you. And you're telling me you went to Danny's house. That was another scene where it was like, Why is this comical? I just want somebody to really just put there. And this has nothing to do with the fact that I don't like Zach. It's the fact that he's a disrespectful ass dude. How you come up in somebody's house, you don't alert them. Number one, damn alert. You don't even ask permission. You just show up. She tells you to get out. You you ain't going nowhere. And they're back and forth. Oh, God, it irritates. I I can't deal with them. It's bad enough when I got to deal with one on screen. Well, I'm more so can, you know, deal with Danny. That's my dog. But when it's, when it's Zach and Danny, it's, it's team too damn much. It just be too much for me. But, you know, so Preston and um, Danny was talking. And I just feel like, you know, I Preston deals with a lot with Danny. Because there is a lot of, you know, I'm not used to this. I'm not this. And I'm not saying that Danny is making excuses. But when you have a man like Preston... It's almost as if, like, sis, come on, you got to meet him halfway. Like, you got to do something because he's going to get tired. He's definitely going to get tired. And I'll just stay with them for and end their storyline. You know, you, you're going to get tired. So she was basically like, she doesn't want someone who's trying to come in and fix her. She doesn't need fixing. And so she called Sabrina. That whole conversation was irrelevant. You know, is he trying to help you or save you? What's the difference? Whatever. And so basically... At the end with um, Preston and Danny, you know, he told her that his mom wanted to meet her. I said, stop all the damn presses. Why your mama want to meet Danny? Now, I know he said his sister told the mom about Danny. This one thing I don't do. I don't, I meet your, I meet your sisters, your brothers, your cousins, all of them. I don't meet children and I don't meet mamas. <laughs> Unless we're serious, I'm talking about like, we are serious. I don't meet moms. I don't meet parents and I don't meet children. Number one, I am very cautious of being in a child's life. And then the relationship don't work. Not only does it affect 
him, but it affects his children. And I'm not a big fan of that to do that to kids because that, that's traumatizing after a while because you have bringing all these different, you know, personalities and these people around your children. And I just don't do that. And for some men, that's a turnoff because they do want you to meet their children. But that's not me. If we're not serious, I don't meet your kids. And I'm I'm damn sure not meeting your parents. I'm just not doing that. So I was just like, that's weird. Doubt. Hmm. Okay. But that's just me. I don't meet parents. And I don't meet kids. But that's pretty much how their thing ended. He, t- <laughs> he told Danny that he paid rent for three months. And Danny was like, I'm about to give you head right now. <laughs> I was like, now that did make me laugh. That did make me laugh. And so he was like, wait, are you playing or are you joking? She was like, I'm playing like a little bit. But that that part was so hilarious. And then the get out reference, um, that was hilarious. So that's how their thing ended. <sighs> Calvin and Maurice, I just can't stand them. The, their scenes were just, it could have been edited. Make a long story short, Maurice was basically trying to give Calvin, again, advice on Sabrina, because he was looking at her, I think it was her IG, and I'm thinking, why the hell do we keep playing seesaw with uh Sabrina and Calvin? I don't understand it. I'm like, we were all there. We saw what happened with them. Sabrina left that nasty ass message on his voicemail. Calvin came down to the bank, proceeded to cuss her the, the hell out, tell her whatever they had is over, is done, and f you in the process. And he walked his little happy hats out. So I'm thinking, okay. So he was like, you know, me and Sabrina, things were good with us. I said, when, Calvin? (laughs) When was anything good with you and Sabrina? Every time there was a a brief moment where it looked like they might experience bliss, something else happened that caused Sabrina to change her mind and her perspective on Calvin and happened every time. So I'm just like, no, it was never good. It was never good, bro. I don't even know where you got that from. And so Maurice was like, well, things were kind of just moving a little too fast for Sabrina. And I'm like, don't speak for her. Don't speak for her. They don't even need, there's no reason for Calvin and Sabrina to be talking. So let's fast forward to Jacoby. Now, some of y'all, this might be my toxic side, okay? I, you know, I do the proper things to check myself and work on myself. I don't think this is toxic, but y'all might think this toxic. I happen to like Jacoby. In another <laughs> in another review, I said that, you know, I, I do. I like semi slash somewhat aggressive men. Not to the point where I think you're going to hurt me, but I do like them kind of dudes, okay? Just, just a little bit. Now, Jacoby got a lot of heat from, you know, the, the sister community about how aggressive he was, about how... You know, Sabrina told him that something that nothing was going to happen. He was like, oh, come on. He forced himself. He did all of these things. I said, so let's cut, excuse, let's cut the bullshit. Okay. We're grown. When you call somebody over to your house late at night, we know the reason that Sabrina called him and we know what Sabrina wanted. When Jacoby came in and Sabrina was acting him and Han acting like she didn't know what the hell that was, you know, that what was going on. He was like, you know, are we kids? Like, You know what's up. You already know what this is. Now, the one thing that did pause, I was like, what the hell? When he came with the weed. Nigga, that's not a um, you don't that's not a housewarming gift, okay? (laughs) It's not it's not a housewarming present. You just come over here with weed, my dude. And we're not gonna act like Sabrina doesn't smoke weed because she does. She smokes with with uh with um Danny. She definitely smokes weed, but the fact that he brought it over, that was like what that was that was a little red flag to me because my thing is how do you know I smoke why would you bring this to me now that made me you know start to wonder like why the hell would he do this but judging by Jacoby's character and his makeup that doesn't seem too far-fetched because like I said I believe he's at least six years younger than Sabrina but (laughs) I want to say this everybody who dragging excuse me Jacoby I want you to remember, because maybe some people have forgotten. Do you remember the first time that Calvin came over to Sabrina's house? Do you remember that he was a great, he basically did the exact same thing Jacoby did, but Calvin moved a little faster. And if you don't remember, you need some help, go to season one, episode five. Sabrina told Calvin, you know, um, he said he wanted to stay because she was basically telling him, like, we're not having sex. 
we're not doing that. It's just not going to happen. He was like, I want to stay. Sabrina said, basically, you're not staying here. And he was like, oh, nah. And he proceeded to start kissing her neck the same way Jacoby did. And in about 3.5 seconds, Calvin had his hands on Sabrina's ass with his face doing what he doing down now. I'm like, well, damn, that escalated quickly. So, so I'm like, for the same people who coming down on Jacoby, go back and check out Calvin. He did the exact same thing. Sabrina was acting the exact same way. He was like, oh, you, oh, you one of them girls. And she was like, what girl? The girls who really want to give it out, but acting like they don't. Oh, okay then. That was Calvin. He, they did the exact same thing. So I often wonder with the cast of sisters, why do certain characters, you know, are held to like this higher um, level of uh, esteeming them and other ones can do the same thing. And it's like, Oh, it's whatever because it's Danny or because it's Andy or, or whatever the case may be. So speaking of Andy, let's go to Andy and Karen. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. <laughs> when Andy was talking to Karen and Karen said, I kind of want to call Aaron. I yelled at the TV. I said, call him for what trick? Call him for what? Yo, indecisive ass, bet not call my man. I got, oh, baby, I was hot. Because then in, in the same damn breath, she says, and so Andy was like, you sure you want to, you sure you don't want to call that? I mean, he's with somebody. So I said, so wait, 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 wait. So you want to call, like, I didn't, I didn't like that because it makes me feel as if, Karen is treating Aaron like he your second damn choice, like he's second best in this situation. And he's not. He's the first round pick in the first draft, in the first round of the draft. Zach ass is probably, you know, uh, level or, or, or uh, um, round 14, if that even exists. Like the fact that Karen is is struggling with this, it is unfreaking believable. It, and I understand the heart's the heart wants what the heart wants, but I'm like at a certain time, my chick, you need to understand that Zach ain't changed, okay? Zach has not changed. Zach is the exact same person you saw it up close and personal, live and even live and in living color. Why is this still an issue for you? I don't understand it at all. It makes no sense. Now, going back. To Calvin and Sabrina and Jacoby. Now, let me tell you something now. <sighs> Jacoby was was putting in work. He was putting in quality time. And it looks like he was putting in overtime as well. And, you know, they was getting it in on the ta- on what, the little island thing. And um, I was like, oh, well, <laughs> okay. So, you know, I'm watching it or whatever. And then, you know, somebody knocks on the door. And I'm like. I was mad for Sabrina. Like, it's been a minute since she done got some. She getting some quality work done, and somebody knocking on her damn door. So, Jacoby was like, I'm I'm, I'm close. She was like, you're not close. Y'all, maybe you've been going at this for a while. And I hollered because it made me think about a personal situation. Now, like I said, I do feel like Jacoby is a few years younger than Sabrina. And at this particular time in my life, I was dating this younger guy. And um, I have a pretty high sex drive. Like, it's it's pretty intense, okay? So, to meet someone, to have a, an encounter with someone who was on another level than I was, it was unfreaking believable. I was like, time out. I need a water break. I have never said that in my life. But when I when, when Sabrina said that, she was like, are you on something? Like, how you last this long? It, I could not stop laughing because it was such a personal moment for me. Now, this is what I don't do. I can't speak for any other woman or any other person. But you don't come to my house unannounced. You can be outside knocking on the door. You would just be knocking because you didn't tell me you was. I don't, I don't play that. My house is a is a is a peace haven. And when I want to be alone and when I just want to be, you know, to myself, that's what the hell I want to do. And I'm not interrupting that for anybody. Call me. Let me know you want to come over. And if I'm in the place that you can, then you will. The fact that Calvin showed up unannounced, you showed up. You talking all nice and sexy to her. 
I'm like, Nick, did you forget how this ended with y'all? These every almost every man on this show has done that. Calvin did it last night. You show up at this girl house. You don't know what she got going on. And then when Jacoby was like, Sabrina, and let me tell you, I got so angry. When Calvin pushed that door back, I said, wait, 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 wait. Sabrina, I need you to go off on him right now. This is your house. And you have overstepped your bounds by pushing. What? 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 And then to act like he was so hurt. And let me deal with y'all men because I got a, a whole bunch of y'all. A whole bunch of y'all was coming at me today. Not not in a nasty way. But a whole bunch of y'all was like, Sabrina, um, she did my dog dirty. I'm like, she did we forget that just the other night Calvin was sliding up in another woman? Did we forget that? He spent the whole night with a woman. Isn't that what he told Maurice? So he just got done having sex with somebody. But Sabrina wrong for, for doing her? Get the hell. See, y'all, ooh, Jesus. Some of y'all men. Oh, y'all just forgot about that, huh? Okay, anyway. So I'm like, what you mad for? What are you mad for? And I just, the I think it's the lack of communication for me. How the hell you just show up at somebody's house after, you know, curse them the hell out, you know, you have something to drink that will make this much easier. No, what will make this much easier, my guy, if you got the hell out from in front of my house? That's what will make this easier. And I'm just like, I don't understand this. These men, they just pop up. When Zach, Zach broke into a damn hotel room, you mess up my stuff, then you go slide up in somebody else the next night. They they all do it. They all do it. I, I don't get it, but they all do it. Um... Gary shows up to Andy's house and it's amazing to me how he's not alarmed. Your car keys are gone. Your keys to Andy house is gone. I couldn't remember if he said his wallet or not, but all this stuff is gone. You know, you got a crazy ex-wife and you're not alarmed. Like there is nothing in your mind to say, Hmm, maybe Jasmine did this. So for me, if I was Andy, initially you have had an assault. You've been assaulted. You've been attacked. You were jumped and you did your police report. Did you follow up on the thing? You have had no extra security. And the fact that when a few episodes back, when Gary told her that he had multiple copies of her house key, you didn't think to change your damn locks. Like the stupidity, (laughs) The, the absolute and utter stupidity of the women on this damn show. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't even know why it's like that. I really don't, but it's just, it's ridiculous to me. It's, it's ridiculous. So the last scene of this, I don't even know what to call this, the last scene. So th- this didn't make sense either. We have Gary who's in the bathroom in his little box of briefs or whatever. Which means you were you were there, y'all, because y'all went in the room to have sex. Well, let's go back. When Gary came over and um he was talking about the hotel, Andy told him that he should move in with her. And I said, Oh, you want him to come to your house, the same house that he told you ain't shit? Your piece of your piece of crap house? Okay. But all right. And so he was like, What do your girls think? And you know, she was just like, you know, I'm learning. He said, Can you just not tell your girls everything because they know everything? And she was like, you know, that's a lesson that I'm learning, so on and so forth. And basically, it's like your friends have come to the place where especially, hell, Aaron, I mean, Karen can't say not a damn thing to you right now. And I do respect Danny so much because it's like there's nothing we can say. This is her decision. This is what it's going to be. And I know that's hard when you watch your friend have to, and they're in an abusive situation. But that's what it is. So they go in the room to have sex. And closed the door. I said, um, am I missing something? Uh, trick you live by yourself. Who, clo- <laughs> it was just like, who closes the door in a one bedroom and you're the only one living in that mug? Who does that? But, you know, hey, this is fair. So it did not make sense to me. We heard, um, Jasmine use the key to get in. She had gloves on, all of that. And so Andy was like, baby, is that you? And she was like, nah, baby, like, it's me. You hear them going back and forth. Gary comes out of the bathroom as if he's shocked, as if you couldn't hear these people yelling at each other. Jasmine, Jasmine, what are you doing here? I said, my God. 
Jasmine pointed that gun at that man. I think she shot him twice. And I'm pissed the hell off at that digital blood that spewed, supposedly, from um, Gary's stomach. First of all, we didn't even see no bullet entry. We didn't see none of that. That I I was so pissed off. All I could do was laugh. All I could do was laugh at that damn graphic, <laughs> that digital blood. That, I said, Tyler, I'm done. Tyler, what are you doing? And that's how the episode. So she pointed the gun to Andy. Andy was ba- basically pleading for Jasmine not to shoot her. And that's how the episode went off. And I was just like, for me, I wasn't shocked at that. I wasn't surprised. I wasn't, it wasn't an oh my God moment for me. There was nothing really exciting to me in this episode. I knew Aaron wasn't going to be in the episode, but I think his presence was missed. That specialness that he brings, it was missed. And I'm just like, what did we just watch? Y'all, what did we watch? I'm like, there are so many unanswered questions. Who, I don't even care anymore about the credit card, but as a census, you know, who used the credit card? Who was this? Was this just a random woman? You, that, that made no sense. And I'm just like, oh, okay. Like, I didn't even know how to take that. I could have sworn there was supposed to be another scene with Fatima and Zach. They were going to be in her house. Now, I don't know what happened with that. I don't know if that that uh, scene was, was uh, taken out in post-production. I don't know if, or, you know, in editing or whatever, I don't know what happened because it was just so confusing that there was no conclusion as to what happened with Fatima and Zach. We could only conclude that she either dropped him. Like, I don't know. I was just like, how the, why the hell he at Danny's house? It just really made, um, it just made no sense to me. I just could it was just somewhere. And the fact that Sabrina looked like she was hurt that Calvin saw that. And I'm just like, why? Why y'all in y'all? It's like in the moments where they can take their power back in, to some extent. It's like, nah, they don't, they don't do that. And I, I just, I just don't understand it. Now, the show will be back June 9th. Okay. I have no expectation, (laughs) which I think is best. I have no expectation. I said, here I am trying to encourage people to continue to watch this doggone show. And I'm just like, this is what the hell you do for the season finale? Really? I just, um, I don't know. I just, I, I, I really, really don't know. And it's just like, even, you know, people asking me about like, what do I think will happen? Season three, I, I don't know. I don't know. I want to, I want all these women to choose themselves. Um, I want all these women to recognize the power within themselves outside of a man, their identity outside of men showing realistic things. And not, cause my whole thing is everything that happens that produces change in you or, you know, challenge the way that you think it doesn't always come from a toxic place. And I just think that's what we have been shown. I know many of you guys, you know, you comment a lot and, um, about the way that Tyler portrays black women, about these narratives that he's creating. And I know supposedly he, you know, got new writers, but I think season three was already, you know what I'm saying, shot and and is over with, you know what I'm saying, when these new people came upon. So I do believe that the whole season three has been written by uh, Tyler Perry. And um, I don't I don't get it. Going back to the comments, Thank you guys for commenting because y'all keep the stuff. Y'all have some interesting perspectives that I do enjoy. So somebody um, messaged me and they was like, you know, well, you didn't respond to my comment. So let me tell y'all what's going on with that. It's so many comments now that there's an app that I have. It's called the YouTube studio and it shows like the creator, the analytics. It goes like in depth. So the comments are coming, are showing up there, and then they show up on the regular YouTube. So sometimes I don't see it. So I try to heart everybody's comment, and I do read them. But sometimes I don't see them, or sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm going to come back to that and respond, and I don't because it's a lot. And I try to respond to everybody at least once. If I don't do it, you know, blame my mind, not my heart, because I do appreciate you guys so much for listening and, you know, all these other things that's going on. Um, 
with the with the uh the channel and i appreciate everybody who has been listening even for those who you know don't like the the videos or whatever i you still listen so i appreciate you um and it's a lot of people who listen but don't comment or you don't have to comment or don't like you don't have to like or don't subscribe you don't have to subscribe but i really would appreciate if you did subscribe if you do enjoy listening to what you're listening to um I just didn't like this episode. <laughs> I didn't like this episode. Uh, I think I talked a hit on um everything. Um, I think I hit on everything. I some stuff it just didn't stick in my head because I was like it was just not important to me. You know what I'm saying? I just um uh, I was just disappointed. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, okay, it's been 40 minutes, but I I was just disappointed. Um, like I said, I think I hit on everything. I I'm still gonna have sisters. Um, videos coming out to YouTube. And I know I told you guys that uh, my Patreon was going to be out on April 1st, but it won't be live until April 10th because there was I didn't really like the quality. I wanted to have more stuff on there when I do make it go live. So, um, but I would continue to give more information about that. And, um, yeah, it's been a fun ride. Um, you know, I'm still posting videos. I will be reviewing All American. And if there are any other shows that you guys would like for me to review, let me know, even if it's old shows. I saw some people, they were reviewing Girlfriends, reviewing Moesha. I could talk all day about Moesha Trust. But um, it, whatever it may be, movies, whatever, topics, I'm getting more into that. So I do appreciate you guys for being with me all season two of Sisters. And you know what I'm saying? Just being constant and consistent. And I do appreciate you guys greatly. Until next time, I will holler at y'all later. Bye.